Hey Rack and Beer viewers, happy homebrew Wednesday. Let's get ourselves a beer. As always, you are sitting on the kegerator, and I am trying to remember which tap I'm supposed to pull from. Ha, ah, lucky guess. Well, educated lucky. Lucky educated guess. I'm gonna pour myself a, a stout here and give you a little give you a little look see at the stout. Um yeah, and then uh, maybe talk, uh, I'm just killing time now, I'm, it's pouring really slow. I've turned the gas way down because it was pouring with uh, too much head. So I might have poured, I might have turned the gas down just maybe a little bit too much, but oh, it's coming out so nice. All right, check that out. That is a, that is a perfect stout pour right there. Or well, I guess it could be the, the really nice stout faucet with the cascading, but uh, I'll take that. Nice uh, nice tan head on top. It's uh, the color of stout, which is dark. Um, yeah, great. How are you guys? Let me get a little closer so we can be a little more intimate together. Cheers. Oh, smells like coffee with sugar in it it's got a kind of a sweet smell but it's all all roasted malt and coffee which is awesome oh that's it. it's a really it's a really nice stout um so i brewed this um some friends of mine uh let me see if i can get the recipe up to while i'm I've got my, I broke my phone, broke my phone the other day, so now I'm, uh, I'm back on my old ancient iPhone, and uh, I actually pulled, I actually opened Beersmith, I don't know how well that's going to come out on camera, but I, uh, I opened Beersmith uh, to try and uh, get the recipe, and apparently the last time I used this phone, I left a timer running on Beersmith. So, um, there is a negative 27,744 hours, 9 minutes, and 30 seconds to the next step in the, uh, in the, um, boil. Good to know. I wonder, I wonder what I was brewing. Can I actually click that and find out? Grandfather Smash. Holy crap. What? Man, that must have been, like, the first thing I ever brewed on the Grandfather. I think that I did a smash for my first beer on the Grandfather. That's, um... <laughs> That's pretty cool. Look, there isn't even enough space in the on the app. So I think the numbers are just coming off the screen. Well, that's uh, that's fun. That's fun stuff, guys. But let's uh, let's actually see if I can get the recipe for this. So, the recipe for this uh, for this beer was um, it was basically the uh, oh here it is. This has got to be it. So what I was going for is uh, the KBS uh, base recipe. I know a lot of you guys have, have brewed that one, and I've I've heard a lot of good things. It's uh, it's available. It's available on. Um, take a sip while I try and think. Uh, American Homebrewers Association has the um, the recipe for it, the clone, and um, it's a good beer. I know um, Founders makes like really good like straight ahead that I mean really nice American stouts and the guys that I was uh, brewing this with I was showing them um, how to brew and they wanted a they're into strong kind of full-bodied sweet type stouts they're not into anything like hoppy so this is kind of a departure for me when I drink it it's um it's the kind of stout that I was into when I first started getting into beer, it's um, it's very straightforward, nice roastiness, very full body, very sweet. It's about um, it's about eight percent, little over. It's like eight point one percent, I think. I was going for an imperial. This is kind of borderline, like a session imperial. This is a Mike Dean session beer. Mike Dean session stout. Uh, <laughs> you're getting your own category that's right um, it was supposed to be 10% so what happened with this beer is is that um, uh, brewed it we brewed it right after Christmas and so 
I couldn't get the uh, I couldn't get the ingredients shipped to me. I think I made a video about um, the, the 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 video where I got the box that I didn't even want. That's the that's the ingredients for this pier. Because it was supposed to be like um, uh, Maris Otter and um, some darker crystal malts and uh, Willamette, I think, hops. So what happened instead is I just raided my um, what I had laying around and then I made up this recipe. So it's 5 kilos Maris Otter, 3 kilos Pale Ale malt, 750 grams oats, flaked oats. 400 uh, uh, 400 grams uh, roasted barley, which I thought that was going to be a crazy amount, but it I was a little afraid of that amount of roasted barley, but it's good stuff. Um, 400 grams of chocolate malt, 250 of uh, Cara Ruby, and uh, 200 grams of Carafa 3. So, um, yeah. It's a it's a pretty big uh, grain bill. I got awful efficiency. What I did was I I mashed. I like tried to split up half the grain into my old uh, cooler mash tun, and then the other half into the grandfather because I had way too much grain, and we didn't. I we were just hanging around, and I mean a, a double mash brew day wasn't something that they were probably. It shouldn't be your, your first brew day. Shouldn't be a double mash brew day. So. Um, so I split the mash between two vessels, and then what I did was um, I pulled the grandfather basket out, and then I poured the first runnings, uh, and then I only sparged the um, the cooler mash tun until I got to uh, pre-boil volume, which wasn't very much. It was only a few liters of uh, water that I sparged through, so it was the highest gravity reading. Um, I think we were at like. But it was really old grain stuff I'd had kind of laying around for a while, and of course when you're mashing that much, the efficiency kind of goes to hell. So I got a really awful efficiency, like I don't even probably low 60s, if not high to mid 50s. Um, so I think the I think the OG on this thing was like 1080 something, 1084 or five. Um, and then it got down to about 1019. Does that sound about right? Uh, I've had this beer. I've had this beer conditioning in the kick for quite a while. Um, one of the guys, uh, one of the guys I work with, and then the other guy is a friend of ours who actually lives most of the year in Belgium, and he only comes back to Denmark in the summer. So uh, I'm gonna try and get a bottle of this up because I got to give them their parts, and I actually got to hold on to a third of the keg for the guy in Belgium until he gets here this summer. Which I do need to get it in bottles because it is a really nice, it's a really nice beer. Um, I'll try and put the recipe, if I can remember, I'll put it on my website, what what I actually did. Or you can just, if you follow the, um, if you follow the, uh, the AHA one, uh, you can actually do the, the, the like, real, real one. This is kind of a remix clone. Uh, oh, also the hops. The, that's actually what I was, that was what I was going for in a roundabout. So, um, I obviously didn't have the Willamette hops. Um, I had like a teeny tiny bit of, um, I don't even think the hops are here in this recipe because I was just playing, I was just playing jazz on the, on the day of, um, looking through the freezer. And I actually used, um, the, uh, I had like, um, 20 ish grams of phoenix which is a which is a kind of um british one i think i used it a long time ago in a brown ale a chocolate brown ale uh and then i used uh oh crap i'm never gonna remember one of the german hops um that i bought new like super new smog rod or uh something like that it was just like little bags so this is just like completely random hops in this thing um, but it, it actually turned out, it's got a, it's got kind of an interesting, uh, like this is by no means, uh, the recipe isn't supposed to be hoppy, but it does kind of have a cool, like, there's just a little hint of something almost, uh, fruity in it. And I think that that's from the, uh, random hops that I threw in, because a few of them were supposed to have, like, um, 
red berry characteristics. And I, and I almost feel like I can get that in the flavor. Could just be my imagination, but uh, yeah. So I probably won't put the recipe because I don't remember at all what I, I wonder, maybe I wrote it down? No, probably not. We were drunk. It was a, it was that kind of a, it was that kind of a hangout where there was a lot more drinking, there was a lot more emphasis put on the drinking of the beer than the, the brewing of the beer. So, but I gotta say, for as little care as I took in brewing this guy and that it was all just old uh, malt that I'd had laying around and old hops that I had, sitting in the freezer for for ages. I, not gonna lie, I think this is probably the best stout I ever brewed. Not not that I've brewed a ton of stouts because it's the kind of beer that I'd rather buy. Um, I don't usually like to have like 20 liters of it sitting around, five gallons. Um, I'd rather just have a few in the fridge because I, I get in the mood for a stout a lot less often than I do for like just a, especially a strong stout like this. A lot less often than I do like an IPA or a pale ale or, or something like that. But uh, this has got to be, I've brewed maybe six, seven, eight stouts and this is definitely number one. Um, it's uh, it's crazy good. Uh, I'm really, I really, and I've given it to the guy I work with and he, he was like floored um, by how good it was. He said that, I mean like he'd heard you know the stories about homebrew and was like he wasn't he was expecting to just get something that he was going to get you know it was a fun afternoon and, and he was going to be able to you know have something to you know give people when they came over to dinner or whatever and say that he brewed it with his buddy and stuff but he he actually said that it's uh it's good enough that he's not going to share it so that's uh that's a nice compliment that's always a good compliment to get from people anyway i'm taking up enough of your time I just wanted to, uh, I'd mentioned that stout thing, and I was pretty impressed with the way it came out, so I thought it deserved itself a little video. And then now it's got one. So thanks for, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, listening to me ramble about a glass of beer for 12 and a half minutes. And uh, yeah, catch you next time. And uh, hopefully I'll have brewed something, uh, something else. I'm, I'm grinding malt right now. So that usually means that I'm actually going to motivate myself to brew something. Cheers.